He's the guy that does all the roughing up for the reptiles. Here's a look at the Mattel Matthew Universe Origins Reptilax, Mercenary Brutes of the Snake Men. Based on the original design by Axel Jimenez, this Deep Cuts character was originally featured in the Vintage Snake Man series. Now he appears as the Origins figure fans have been hoping for. Reptilax's spiked lizard-like head and serpent's tail distinguish him. I have a sneaking suspicion we're going to be surrounded by snakes soon. First, though, let's grab the tape measure and see just how tall Reptilax stands. Now, again, this is a fan-requested figure that was actually based originally on Axel Jimenez, the first concept design of him. The figure is going to still be using a lot of similar Massey Universe Origins body parts. In fact, actually, you'll be able to spot some of those parts right now. The figure is going to stand about the same size as normal Origins figures, and I'll be bringing some in in a second. Uh, with his mohawk intact, the figure is going to be about five and three quarters of an inch in height, or about 14 and a half centimeters tall. Oh, you got spat on too? How many people just got spat on a moment ago? One, two, three, four, five, five. That's all I spit. Let's bring in some other snake men for comparison's sake. First, seeing as he is on the mini comic and all, uh, the mini comic I haven't yet showed you guys, here's what the figure looks like with Snake Armor Skeletor. One of my least favorite Skeletors, FYI. Uh, bringing in some of the snake men as well. Here's what the figure looks like with snake face. Um, also, here's what he looks like with raptor. Raptor is always one that always falls. In fact, he just probably even heard. He just took a tumble just a few seconds ago. Uh, let's bring in also as well tongue lash or uh, Cobra Khan. Cobra Khan's always a good one. Uh, let's bring in Squeeze, another one that has a lot of s in his name. Uh, you'll be seeing also as well, there's no uh, King Hiss. Still don't have King Hiss. I don't know why I haven't yet bothered to... T pick up King Hiss. There's also as well the Snake Armor, uh, I guess the Snake Trooper, Horde Trooper, whatever he was called. Yeah, a lot of Snake Men. Uh, Reptile X has some good company with him. Oh, and that mini comic? Right over here. This one actually is called Leviathan's War and featured on the front is Lord Grasp. For those that may not know who Lord Grasp is, we will be looking at him in an upcoming review. Also, Snake Armor Skeletor. And on the adjacent corner, I've also got Reptilax. So all the three characters are featured very much on the front. Leviathan does remind me recently, I watched Leviathan starring Peter Weller, a very underrated horror sci-fi. I, I was also smart that I kind of did back-to-back -back Deep Star 6 and I folded also with Leviathan. I feel like if I had flipped it around the other way, I would have watched only the more superior sci-fi horror Leviathan and then watched, I feel... Uh, the, un, the inferior Deep Star 6. I know some like Deep Star 6. Deep Star 6 is a great movie. Unfortunately, though, it has a very laughable uh, special effect, especially done on the creature. Leviathan is good. Like, if you were to put it in top tier, Leviathan, Deep Star 6. You can fight me if you want to. Don't, don't fight me. Let's just, let's agree to disagree if you disagree with what I just finished saying about Leviathan. Anyways, flipping around on the back, speaking of Lord Grasp, the venomous viper with a crushing claw. Happens to be right over here. We've also got Terror, Reptilax, and Vipor. Viper is actually the one that has more kind of unique parts given to him. Some of these basically are reused. I mean, a lot of times Origins figures, for the most part, are reused figures anyways. But there's a lot of reusing going on with all this whole wave of figures. Uh, flipping through the, the comic, uh, the artwork is actually quite good. Lord Grass featured in the in majority, really, of this story. And also as well, there's Snake Armor Skeletor. I just I don't like Snake Armor Skeletor. And there's also Reptilax. Uh, to note also as well, like Reptilax has this weapon that looks to be a crossbow, and yet the character doesn't come included with it. I don't know why they chose not to include it. You can see Skeletor does, though, have the power sword. Let's move that off to the side. Figure does use a lot of things. A lot of things already from the body you'll recognize, but you may also recognize some of the things that the figure also comes included with. Like, for example, a snake shield. This snake shield happens to be the same one that we did get from before. I can't remember for the life of me which figure actually had this. Was it snake face? Maybe it was snake face. Same molding of shield, though. Different coloring of plastic. Green, red. You got your Christmas colors. Christmas snake colors. They clip on the exact same way, though, and they don't clip the easiest way. In fact, if you try to put it on the figure's arms, uh, I always find, like, if you put it too far down, the it's just loosey-goosey, floppy, messy. You kind of want to have to bring the, uh, you want to bring the shield just up a little bit more, and it seems to hold a little bit better. See that? Okay. Figure also comes included with two other things that the character, uh, other figures have come included with. Like, for example, the sword, which I believe is the sword that we also got with uh, Triclops. 
It's just molded a little bit different in, in green. He also gets as well an axe that comes included, well, or had come included with Ram Man. Ram Man had two axes, I believe, connected together. So he had sort of an axe staff. What was that all about? Uh, you only get one half of this, though, and it's molded in the same green plastic. Overlook the fact, obviously, there's a hole on the bottom. You can't do really anything with the hole. Can you put it on the end of the sword? No, no. It would be fun, actually, if they had made this just a little a little connecting peg on the end. But, I mean, like, how ridiculous would that have been? Sword on one side, axe on the other. I mean, what? how easy would this be for him to wield? The answer is very difficult. Uh, by the way, there is no storage space on the back of the figure's body. So if you thought, hey, I could use extra storage to maybe hold the axe, hold the sword, you can't do that. doesn't have that. But at least he does have two gripping hands. He doesn't have like this, the regular you know, grabbing hand. He doesn't have that. He has at least two gripping hands. So let's just take the shield and we'll put it off to the side. Of course, if you wanted to, of course, you can take the axe, put it in his hand if you wanted to. You, you know. I want to show you guys at least everything here. Uh, of course, you can take the sword, put the sword in his hand. Yeah, at least he can double wield. And I guess, too, you could also take the shield and attach that on. But I, I think that's just kind of overkill. Uh, one a little bit of assembly that was required for Reptilax also involved taking his tail, and the tail was a separate piece. There's a hole. Well, there's a hole. It had to be right here. Like, it couldn't have been a peg, and this couldn't have been the hole. Yeah, you know, it has to be a hole right, right. Uh, out of the gutter. Anyways, you take the tail, and you just attach it onto the back of the figure's body. You would have to assume as well that he's got a hole in his loincloth, because, like, how would he get his pants on? He'd have to, would he just, like, he'd have to take the, the pants, are we... Are we overly thinking this? I guess if it's a loincloth, it would just be draping over his leg. But like, how does he put this on if this long tail is in the way? Don't answer that down below, whatever you do. Got some red down below there. Uh, of course, the main coloring of this, I don't know, I guess you would call it like a peach yellow. He has it through the majority of his body. Although it isn't quite the same color as you can see in his torso. His torso is ever more absent of that yellowish color. I, I suppose it's supposed to be like that. And the orange is really only in his arms and in his lower legs. Speaking of his lower legs, the figure does have what seems to be the lower legs, a buzz off right down to his monster feet. So he's using, of course, that same body and Origins body. I mean, a dime a dozen. We always get these Origins bodies. They haven't really retooled anything here at all for Reptilax. Simply just have added a now new armor piece over top of his body, which does attach on the back. You basically would just detach that and you would just remove it altogether. It actually kind of looks like something you would see from Flash Gordon. Speaking also of sci-fi, I can't help but think that Reptilax's face looks a little bit more like a Gorn. If he only had the time, Doctor. If he only had the time. One of my favorite classic Star Trek Star Trek episodes, in which, of course, Captain Kirk has to fight the Gorn on a planet, and Captain Kirk proceeds to then, it like, breaks up diamonds. All the valuable diamonds in the world, and I, what I wouldn't do to trade it in for a phaser. I know that's not verbatim the phrase, but Captain Kirk basically is grounding up a coal and making diamonds. Of course, he's going to make himself a bazooka and blast away the Gorn. And the Gorn's just like, Sss. looks like the Gorn, everybody. His mouth doesn't open and close, but what at least does have is the little, the, uh, the little tongue. I was going to say a tail, a little tongue that sticks out like this. It paints pretty good though on his teeth, top and bottom. I like that also the colors of the eyes that they've given him as well. Sculpting, of course, on the back, he's got these very large spikes. The spikes themselves are just as hard of a plastic as the rest of his face. I like the look of the face. It just doesn't look like a character that would belong in the, in the Mass Universe Origins line. I mean, the actual body as a whole, from the design that we get here, like a fan, fa fan favorite design, I think that it's nice that they actually did release a version of Reptilax. And if anything, you probably could get this guy if you wanted to have an army building. I can't imagine this guy would be overly expensive. Get like several of these. These guys could kind of be like the little army uh, soldiers for the, you know, for the Snake Man. But the articulation on this guy is going to be essentially the same. And of course, if you wanted to customize this character, I mean, it. I mean, I never really show you guys, obviously, uh, in these reviews. I always end up proceeding to joke about the little paper insert. But just to show you that, you obviously could pop the arms off. You can, you know, you can pop off the hands. You can pop off the head. You could mix and match the parts if you wanted to. Again, the bodies, the top of the horse, the lower half of his body, just div divorce one from the other. You could just mix and match the parts if you want to customize your characters. Let's snap this back in place, though. For the articulation, though, on Reptilax, starting first with his head sculpt, it is on a full ball joint. If he has the time, Doctor, if he only has the time. I'm, I know I'm eating up some of your time. I'm so sorry for that. Head goes up. The head goes down. The head also rocks back and forth as well. A straight swivel, only in the waist. The arms do rotate all the way around. You can hinge them also out as well. Swivel in the forearm. Bend in the elbow. Hands rotate all the way around. That sounds almost like a kid's rhyme. Legs split out. 
Uh, one thing I did want to mention, though, is that the lower knees for mine on Reptilax is a little on the looser side. I don't know if that's just mold degradation over time because we you know, keep continuing to use the same molds again and again. A little loose, a little loosey-goosey. Not as loosey-goosey, though, as the top of the swivel of the, uh, the boots. Of course, the ankle pivots are nice and tight there as well, and you can also rock them back and forth, too. There is some tail articulation, so if he's happy, I guess you could have the tail up. If he's sad and he's going to be hissing at you, uh, speaking from example, you can also bring the tail down. The tail also does serve as well to give a little bit of a tripod, although you want to just make sure that it's kind of turned a little bit out of the way. All in all, though, a nice looking figure. Uh, you know, I, I was kind of on the fence as to whether I wanted to really pick up Reptilax. I don't have as much emotional attachment necessarily to him as I would with some of the Origins, the other Origins figures I've picked up in the past. But again, like if you are collecting the Snake Men, it's like one of those weird curses. Snake Men, if you've always really noticed that Snake Men always seems to be near the end of a Master Universe or uh, Master Universe line. The vintage line when they got the Snake Man count coming in, that, that was kind of like when the line was dying off. Uh, 2000X was also the same thing. I think also, too, the Snake Man correct me if I'm wrong, was also part of the Classics line near the end of its line. So again, like it always seems to be the case, like the Snake Man always seems to seal the doom of whatever current Masters line they, they have right now. And I hope that's not the case. Because again, I love of the stuff that Mattel really does do when it comes to Master Universe, the origin stuff is more my bread and butter. Uh, maybe not Reptilex to some extent, but you know, again, if you are collecting the other, you know, other Snake Man, uh, Reptilex, even though he is a sum of other people's parts, he's still a nice looking figure for your collection. Right now, there's some random viewer thinking, this Star Trek episode you were speaking of is interesting to me. Can you tell me more? It's actually from the classic Star Trek episode from 1967 called Arena. Captain Kirk, and I think it's an unnamed Gorn. Do we ever really know the name of the Gorn? Not that it really matters. They're basically thrown on a planet by an alien species, and then are told they have to defeat one another. Think of it basically as a planet-wide uh, Thunderdome. Uh, uh, Captain Kirk is very meticulously trying to make a weapon from scratch. Meanwhile, I think the Gorn just grabs himself a sharp like rock, and he's going to use that to impale the captain it's a deep cut on the captain speaking though of deep cuts how's that for a segue the design though of reptilax is actually based on a mini vin vintage mini comic called king of the snake men in which we basically see reptilax kind of in the background they actually took that as the source material for why this character existed in the first place so it's a deep cut from the standpoint of a mini comic although i don't think reptilax ever really got a vintage figure it's certainly good though for fans of the original vintage comics because if you had those original mini comics you probably thought them at some point hey that guy that doesn't really quite look like a snake man but he kind of looks instead like a gorn from star trek ah you got the reference as well i would love if they could ever really release a figure of him and well wouldn't you know it years later mattel finally does give us one and even though it is really a sum of many other people's parts we get of course the lower half of buzz off we get weapons from triclops ram man and of course notably we get the shield from another snake man release the head sculpt is good. The coloring is good. And while maybe not one that I would have so rushed quickly to a store to grab, admittingly, I am glad to have now gotten my hands on Reptilax, not only from the, from the standpoint that he appeared in the mini comics, but at least, again, if you want to build the ranks of the Snake Man, Reptilax is not a bad addition at all. What do you think of the character? Let me know down below in the comments section. This interests me. I want to know more. Well, this guy is available right now in stores or online. If you guys have had the chance to pick up Reptilax, let me know down below in the comment section. If in the meantime, you guys did enjoy this video, do it a solid, throw it a like. You want to stick around for more though, hit the subscribe, turn on the bell, come back please. As always guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.